celebration of Holy Eucharist continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. <laughs> blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Kindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading from Scripture. Isaiah, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us stand and say verses 15 through 21 of Psalm 147 as printed in your Sunday bulletin. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. He has strengthened the hearts of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with honor and sweet. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word on his very swiftly. He is snow like wool. He scatters wool across like ashes. He scatters his tail like a tree. Thank you. 
reading from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now stand together and sing hymn 98. so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, 
but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given to Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Dear Lord, may God be known to us through the Word made flesh in Jesus Christ, and may we receive him and know him well in our time. Amen. Please be seated. What you just heard from what biblical scholars call the prologue to John's Gospel, those historic and extremely important words, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things came into being through him. That incredible summation of the story of Jesus Christ from the highest uh, theology uh, in all of Christian scripture, what we just heard was affirmation that the Christ event of the incarnate word coming to this earth, that pivotal event in the works from the dawning of time was to be the start of a whole new era in human affairs. And indeed it was. And indeed it continues on the heels of our celebrations of Christmas this year. The living, breathing word in the flesh. Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, born to this earth to make all the difference, to nudge the people of this world forward toward the fulfillment of the good, the fulfillment of the good, and to, and to hang in there with every single one of us through thick and thin until the good is one day accomplished. That is God's will. That's God's will for creation, for creating something where there was nothing, for giving you life where there was no life before. Dear friends and seekers, I pray that you had some moments of, of grace and great pleasure uh, and new life on Christmas Day. I hope you will experience even more blessings ahead as the Christmas season continues through January 5th. It's a season, it's not a day. I hope you didn't wrap it up and throw it in the recycling bin because you ain't seen nothing yet. This is a new year coming and we bring the spirit and the power of Christmas with us. St. Matthew's Church had a, a, an amazing Christmas Eve and Christmas Day in terms of souls uh, attending worship. It was our, absolutely our best Christmas ever by that measure. Uh, 214 people were shoehorned in here at four, at four o'clock at the four o'clock service. There were 125 in here, which is a good Sunday uh, here. Uh, it's a seven o'clock with the junior choir, and there were 148 souls at the 11 o'clock, and 17 on Christmas morning, 10 of whom were from one family. Mom, dad, and eight of their 10 kids made it for Christmas that day. Uh, and uh, that means that just over 500 people brought themselves to this house of God to embrace the newborn king, to be touched anew by the living word of God incarnate in whom all things were created and have their being. Now, I was and I am still ecstatic about the people and the quality of the liturgy and the music and the, and the spirit of the folk, young and old, who brought themselves before the Lord on Christmas Eve to hear how that true story of Jesus' birth and his impact on this world you know, took root in very humble beginnings and grew to proportions that no one could ask for or imagine. And now today, today, you and I are part of how how the story of people who will receive and welcome the incarnate word of God will or will not continue to build on that great narrative uh, in the year ahead. It's up to us. God has entrusted us with all good things to bring the good to fruition. Now, not too long ago, um, uh, a wonderful uh, 
uh, person named Dr. Howard Thurman uh, wrote a, a Christmas poem, and it contains this truth. He wrote, when the songs of the angels is stilled, when the star in the east is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, hmm? to feed the hungry, to rebuild, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, to make music in the heart. I mean, what a wonderful poem, what a wonderful thing. Yes, when the shepherds are back with their flock, and when the in-laws and the outlaws are back wherever they came from uh, after uh, maybe Christmas and New Year's is over, that is when the work, the wonderful work of Christmas is to begin. And that's the truth. Uh, that's the truth. That's the task. That's your call. The purpose of Christmas is to, first of all, assure us that God is with us all the way, and then to move us to faithful action and generous lives so that if you're hungry out there, you can count on the fact that there's somebody who's going to understand that, that, that's not a, that that's something that needs attention and somebody will care for you. And that means that if you're full, if you're full, that you know you have the opportunity in the world with all to help somebody else out there. That's what it means. Uh, yes, to make uh, music, the music of grace and the work of the heart, your life. Uh, that's applied Christmas, applied Christmas, and you will find that the greatest joy in your life if you, if you will take hold of, receive that word, and share it. Now, the, uh, that great prologue to John's Gospel also told the, the difficult truth, that though the living word of God came to this earth to act that out in this world among us, that almost nobody, nobody really received him, and almost nobody really believed him, uh, they really did not honor his offer to redeem our lives, to show us real joy and life that is life, and to show us how to become real children of God. In St. John's words, you heard it, the world knew him not. And we know from history that that's the hard truth. Uh, 30 years later, what happens? The crowd, hmm? the crowd stands there with their mouths shut like sheep, and they watch as the Roman Empire and the dominant religion of the day, could be any religion, they all do it to people. They not only rejected Jesus' teaching and his way, they literally tried to put an end to it through the means of capital punishment, through crucifixion, or so they thought they could. And of course, now we have the great advantage of knowing better, don't we? We know better, we know that the darkness could not overcome Christ. Huh? his inspiring power and the sure true light of God in this world. And we know that the life-giving and, and uh, well, just the power of Jesus in this world, that God's living word had only increased in power. And it was magnified in grace after the crucifixion, after the world rejected him. Everybody stood there with their mouths closed and said nothing. Even though so many received him not, the true light of Christ shines on, and it shines on to this very day uh, in, in ways incredible throughout the world. Uh, this morning, on this first Sunday of the Christmas season, and one of the kids today, when we were lining up back there uh, for uh, the procession, took one look at me, said, well, what are you doing wearing the Christmas stuff still? And I said, because it's still Christmas. And he said, oh, okay, yeah, and up, yeah. Now that's, no, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. You know, it's not just because I said so, it's because it is, it's still Christmas. You know, let yourself be counted among those who will embrace the Christ child. Let yourself be counted among those who will embrace the way and the teaching, the spirituality, the hope of that great Holy Spirit, that light of Christ, along with the work of Christmas, as that poem put it, to feed and to heal where things are broken and to find the lostness in ourselves and in others and go to work on that to rebuild the nations. God, they need it. We spend 400 times as much on our defense budget as we do on every investment we make in our children's education and health. 400 times. Let's rebuild the nations, folks. Let's bring peace. Let's make music and grace in our hearts. Let's be counted among those who in our time do this because we're just the right people, people of God. And this is the time to do it. As the gospel said, to those who receive this light, those who believe in this name, you have been given the power, the power to become children of God. Let that be your goal. Let that be your purpose. My resolution for this new year, right? To be more and more a person of God in this world. 
Now, there's a great way to start that, and it's a tradition around here, and it's by starting with a thankful heart. So let's spark the spirit of thankfulness inside of us and let it propel us to good work, the good work of Christmas in the days ahead. Now, I always ask on the Sunday after Christmas, who has brought with them one of their favorite gifts? Did anybody bring one of their Christmas gifts with them? Ooh, I see a, ooh, I see a smartphone. I see a book. I don't know what that is. What is that, Sarah? Dylan, what do you got back there? Okay. I'm not up on my superheroes these days, but that's good. I like it. And I see, is that a coloring book back there? What is that, Nathaniel? Nice. Did any, Gregory, you got something with you? Yeah, new boots? There, yeah, new stuff. All right. And, oh, I, what's that? What is that, Jessica? Nice, very nice. Did anybody bring something in their hearts with them that they were given? You know, thinking of things. Okay, that's all of us, right? All right, well, now we're cooking. Now, are you thinking about the person who gave it to you? Who in the world remembered you this year? Who in the world, you know, was generous to you? Nicole, you got your coloring book too, right? Yeah, yeah. Who in the world, you know, knew you and wanted to incarnate their love in a way that gave you something substantive? And, and that's what we, that's one great way of looking at what God has done, you know, to give us something substantive, like the whole world, and like this, this incredible, faithful God man uh, who grew up to uh, just do such things. Now me, I'm holding up my, my the immortal life of Ted Williams. I don't know about immortal. Last I heard, well, he was in a cryogenic chamber in Phoenix, or what was left of him. But but his story, you know, it's a great it's a great new book, and you know, and, and you remember things like that. But I gotta tell you, I brought two things. All right, I had to do it uh, because. <laughs> Because somebody who really, really knows me and really loves me, uh, you know, had to do it to me. And, uh, you know, and that's what love is, right? You know, we, so remember those wonderful people in your lives. But above all, that spirit of generosity and, and those who never gave up, gave up on you, the ones who remember you and will always be there for you. That's, the, that's, that's as close as you get, you know, and it's a wonderful, well, maybe not as close as you get, but it's a wonderful way of, of seeing through that, uh, that sort of divide between heaven and earth, you know, to get a sense of what the love of God in the world is like. Um, so, uh, for a moment, um, in, your, in your mind's eye or in your hand, um, hold up to God and, and to the universe that the, the gifts that you've been given already in this Christmas season, and there'll be more to come, they'll just come in different forms, and let us pray. Dear God, the giver of all good things, on this first Sunday of Christmas, we give thanks for all the wonderful gifts that we have received and for the generous hearts of those who remembered us, of those who loved us in giving them. And we also lift up in our souls the great gift of the life and the witness of Jesus Christ. And we pray that in the days to come, when we get home, or go back to school, or back to the job, that you, O oh Lord, will guide and inspire us daily to the good work of Christmas, the way of compassion and hope and joy, through Jesus Christ, the newborn King, we pray. Amen. Let us now stand together and confess our faith. Using the Nicene Creed, page 358 to the Book of the Prayer. <coughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ.
and the seed of the right hand of the Father. He will come to grant you glory to the rest of the living and the dead. And the seed of the Son of the Lamb, who will be in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Giver of life, who will go to the Father and the Son, for the Father and the Son will be in the Word and the Lord of God. Yes, the Lord is the Father. We will believe in one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, with the acknowledgement of the baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we will look for the resurrection of the dead. The life of the world Amen. For the prayers of the people today, we will use Form 3, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that, that we all be one. one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all the peoples. We pray for Catherine, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, in the diocesan cycle of prayer, St. Barnabas Church, Berlin, the Reverend Janet Lombardo, Interim Rector, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. We give thanksgivings for the gifts we have received this Christmas and for those who remembered us with generosity and love. We celebrate birthdays for all known to us who celebrate birthdays this week, including Terry Warren, Josh Sennett, Diane McCarthy, Nathan Batty, Leslie Doster, Jennifer Catton, Aaron Batty, Frank Lockwood, Alex McCarthy, and Abby Curtis. For those known to us celebrating anniversaries this week, including Paul and Lene Peterson and Jerry and Rose Isikoff, give us grace to do your will in all that we may undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion for those for whom our prayers for healing and encouragement are asked today. Phil, Karen, Diane, Alona, Jasmine, John, Dane, Aaron, Anna, Michael, Joshua, Randy, Rick, Leslie, Skyler, Mary Claire, Judith Ann, Cynthia, Moira, for all of us who struggle with alcohol or drug abuse or love someone who does, for healing within ourselves and for those in our thoughts and hearts today, for the, speedy, uh, the safety and speedy return of those deployed in the armed services and for comfort for their families. For all who pray for peace in the Middle East. For assurance and blessing to those looking for work and for their families. And have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let life perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for, from our Book of Remembrance, Mary Ackerley and Shirley Mae Simons Pritzky, and for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. The Lord our God, Accept the fervent prayers of your people, 
in the multitude of your mercy, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Please turn now to page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer, and let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. For we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
join together in the great thanksgiving, the Eucharistic prayer is found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us speak the peace. Alleluia! <laughs>
for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ was born for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
of thanksgiving is found at the bottom of page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now go forth into the world in peace. Be strong and of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good, rejoicing in the power of God's Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us now and remain with us always. Amen. Hymn 421.
Good work, Anna. Yeah, I'm behind. I'm running up to the other rail. Oh, we do have a uh, lot You know what's funny, Jane? Yeah. There's a secret on the stairs. Yeah, there's a secret. Yeah, there's a secret. Yeah, there's a Yeah, I came yesterday. I'm like, well, that's a little different. I'm good with that. The wine's already in the front. I'm good with that. <laughs> and then Bill says to me, I have Jane told me to apologize to you. See, that's why I kept saying, I'm going to go down and do it. He goes, I did it. I did it. So that I'm wondering, I said, where are the women? Oh, I left those. I said, did you cover the old head? No. No, no that's why I said, Diane's going to not believe me. Have this. No, it was so much easier <laughs> to set up. And of course, they're practicing for the Epiphany play. So I'm like trying to tiptoe around and not disturb uh, Judy, who kind of had her hands full. <laughs> yeah, I bet she did. Yeah, it was kind of a little rough yesterday, but I'm sure she's still good. Oh, it comes oh, a long way. Oh, my gosh. Forgive me. 